Welcome everyone to this presentation and the goal of it, as you see already in the title, is to finally come up with a physical uh, damage mechanism model for wear calculation. In which direction do I have to... Ah, no, sorry, I have... What is happening here? Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I will start here. <clears throat> the work presented here is also part of the Shift to Rail project Freight Rail. Results were presented earlier today by Klaus Six. And you can see down on the right side all partners that are in that work package. But the work which I present here is a cooperation between my university, KTH, CAF Mira, and the University of Navarra in Spain. <clears throat> Today, where models are based on empirical models, which are gained by experiments. We have heard many times today about the T-gamma uh, function and Arcard's wear model with the wear map. They are all measured under certain conditions, material combination, dry contact, very controlled environment, and it is questionable whether they can be extrapolated to other operation conditions, which is, of course, necessary when you do wear calculations. Another motivation is also that an earlier EU-funded project, Road to Rail, which had the task to develop a so-called universal cost model for rail vehicles, mainly for railway running gear, came to the conclusion that the results that were obtained were very dependent on which law, which wear model was implemented and also to the parameters used. So the results were not fully conclusive there. So the object of this study is to come up with a damage model that is based on the physical behavior in the contact between wheel and rail, because more material parameters would be involved. In the wear model today, it's basically just the hardness of the material. You can vary no other vehicle, uh, material parameters. If you would employ more material parameters, then manufacturers would also have much better possibilities to optimize materials. We started off with delamin delaminative wear, a very common wear mechanism in rolling sliding contacts, but also other types of wear should be included in the future. Just an example of an older, very old work, as you can see from 1986 in Spain. <coughs> excuse me, picture of the wheel where you can see that cracks initiate um, under the surface and, and parallel to the surface and often uh, are initiated at inclusions in the material. Here you can see some more recent measurements that were done in connection with this project with different normal forces, different sliding speeds and the number of cycles up to 12,000. And what you can see also that the wear debris, so the material that is worn off, is in the shape of flakes. So to keep this in mind uh, with regard to what we want to do later on. So where is that in rolling sliding contact you create flakes that are worn off from the contact partners and they are initiated, the flakes, by subsurface initiated cracks and the crack nucleation is typically coincident with material non-homogeneities in the material. So to, to come up with a physical model you would like to 
calculate the crack initiation and the crack propagation phase. The problem is if you employ smooth contact, then the stresses you calculate are not high enough for crack propagation to occur if you do a finite element calculation, for example. So the conclusion was there is a need to uh, calculate stresses with non-smooth contact where you take into account the roughness, the asperities in the contact partners. The flow diagram for the general methodology would then be to first solve the normal and tangential contact problem for the non-smooth contact, contact with asperities, give the stress field as input to a finite element uh, model, calculate the crack propagation and the material failure with a finite element model to see how much wear is worn off in that contact. And by that, in the end, again, come to a wear model because when you really want to calculate the wear development, you cannot do finite element calculations. So you need, in the end, again, a wear model, but that should be based on the results one from that finite element calculation. Hello. Today, I will only talk about the first part, the no solution of the normal contact problem. First attempt was to do it with a stochastic analysis, use the Greenwood method to get stochastic distribution of the asperities. You only get elastic deformation, and the roughness peaks are also spherically, spherically shaped and have the same curve <coughs> Radius. The roughness profile height has a normal distribution in that case. What you can calculate with this is the real contact area, not just the Herzchen contact area, the apparent distribution of normal pressures, and a statistical information about the pressure, pressure distribution in each contact area. Another approach which has, which has been adopted is to really measure the asperities with optical interferometry that has been done. And on the right-hand side, you can also see the graph, how it compares to the Greenwood uh, approximation. The advantage with this solution, which really has been tested with a new algorithm that has been developed, is that the asperities really can have a generic distribution, the really the real measured distribution and also the radii of the asperities can vary. And also the amount compares to the measured amount of asperities. Uh, you also have the possibility in that case to introduce elastoplastic deformation, not only elastic deformation in the solution. Again, a flow diagram, <coughs> sorry, what is done, you have to use an iterative process. You first make an assumption of the apparent contact pressure, calculate the local deformations, calculate the local forces, and see does it match with the total normal force you should have. No, go back, uh, change your assumption, calculate a new solution until uh, the error is small enough, until the force is calculated exact enough. You do this first for each element, and then, you, of course, you calculate the total normal force. So in each element, you calculate the number of asperities in contact, calculate the real contact area due to all asperities in contact, and the contact, total contact force in each element. And then, of course, they are summed up, as said. That has been done with a number of random <coughs> uh, topographies. And as expected, the mean value is basically like the Hertzian solution. That's not a surprise. 
that was uh, expected. So both the apparent contact area and the apparent pressure distribution are quite similar actually to the Hertz solution. But perhaps the most important thing here in this bullet list is the last bullet point. The real pressure in the central part of the contact area can now be 10 times higher than the values predicted by Kalka's contact theory, since you calculate the stresses in the asperities. The ratio between the real contact area and the apparent contact area, so the real is where only the, the asperities are counted, is just 8%. 8% is really in contact of the contact area. So, <coughs> sorry to come back to that flow diagram. That was, as I said, only the very first part. The next thing would be the solution of the tangential problem and then the finite element calculation. So what can we conclude up to now? The apparent contact area and apparent contact pressure for rough contact are similar to smooth contact. As I said, that was expected. But due to a series of micro contacts on the asperities, the contact pressure locally is much higher, can be about 10 times higher than with the Hertz solution. It's actually possible to use measured roughness profiles to calculate this. And yeah, using the real topography of course, gives you the possibility to have more accurate results as if you just use a stochastic distribution. Further work, that was, is just the beginning, as I said, solve this tangential contact problem, and then calculate the subsurface stresses, make a statistical cross-correlation of maximum subsurface stress peaks with material non-homogeneities, calculate the crack propagation and material breakup in FM, FEM, and then in the end use all this information to come up with a new VAR model. Okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much.